Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics data flows allow you to build complex ETL processes visually so that you can build your transmission logic in a visual graph that can execute that at scale against a wide range of sources and sinks. In this video, I want to focus on some of the areas you'll want to concentrate in terms of your infrastructure and your approach to optimizations when working with a data lake. So on my canvas, I have an example of a very, very simple data flow and I have three different sources. The reason I have these three sources on here is I want to show you that uh, in a demonstration of a data lake ETL process, you're often going to be pulling data from many different file types and file formats in your lake. The nature of a data lake and how they are organically built is typically traditionally from a set of different types of files that land in the lake and are often not cleansed or have data quality issues in them. And so that's why in ETL processing within Data Factory, using data flows is a great way to clean that data and to be able to bring it together. In my case, I have three sources from three very popular file formats that you can find in a data lake. I have CSV or any text limited file. Avro and Parquet. Now when you start working with Avro and Parquet, now you start to introduce the idea of a uh, the schema being included as part of that file format. And so that'd be different than text formats such as um, you know, uh, comma separated or for that matter even JSON, where data types aren't necessarily built into that description, but you can infer those data types. If I look at an Avro source, for example, in the case of file format types in the lake that have definition of the metadata and the scheme of the data lake Avro and Parquet, when you move over to your projection, that definition will come from the file itself. Now you can uh, you can remove the projection altogether, and you can uh, essentially work in schema drift or schema less approach within data flows. It's absolutely something you can do. But in this case, in this demonstration today, I want to talk about mapping your incoming data to a set of partition folders at the end because you want to work with the data in a way that can allow you to incrementally add data or load data without needing to use the delta format, which is also a data lake format that I'm not going to talk about in this video. So essentially taking a predefined schema from the source file or removing the projection altogether are your only options with Avro and Parquet because they're self-describing. So you can't edit these. But if I move up here to source for my top uh, row, my top stream, this is a text limited CSV file. Notice I'm pointing to that here in my wildcard path. So a very common good approach in data factory and working with data flows is to, uh, as much as you can, make your data sets generic so that I can then send in a parameter or I can change this um, uh, the, the file that is being pointed to, or I could use wildcards in here. I'm, I'm using the wildcard path, but I'm just kind of misusing here because I'm actually pointing directly to a single file. But I could always say any file that has movies db star in there, or I could put a range in there. You could use um, the Hadoop supported globbing, Linux globbing um, characters here in the wildcard path. But in this case, when I get a projection now from this file, it is going to read it, but it's going to be inferred. So there's the ability within uh, data factory to take text file formats like CSV and to infer the data types. And then you can also give some hints to uh, data flow to say that you want to, when you find, for example, a number uh, within your CSV, you always want to use integer or short or long. This works the same in both data factory and synapse analytics. So I've inferred my data types and because the CSV file is not a self-describing format, I can change the data types right here in the source projection tab. Now what I want to do for a demo is I want to show you that uh, a, a really good common approach within a data lake ETL is then to land that data in Parquet. Parquet will be the most effective manner. It'll be, uh, it'll allow you to very effectively compress the data. It'll also put it into a format that is describing of the schema inside of that data, uh, the file format in the data itself, as well as be able to be read very quickly and easily from the Spark engine that's being used by Dataflows. So this Dataflow is essentially taking a text limited and making it into a parquet. So I'm, I'm essentially transforming that into a parquet output. I have a filter on here just because I want to show you that like you can perform database operations now, it's sort of the typical kind of, you know, query um, against your data that you would do against a database, you can perform against your data files that are sitting in the lake. I could 
uh, take these different uh, files that I have coming in and from these different sources, and I could join those together here as well. I can form an exists, a union lookup across all these. It doesn't matter, matter if these aren't coming from a database engine. We provide that, essentially that um, federated view over this data to allow you to have a query engine on top of it by using Spark and data flows. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a simple filter on here just to filter out any movie, my source data is movies data, any movie that was released greater than the year 1989. Then what I wanna do here is when I create my uh, Parquet file, there are some important settings to keep in mind here. The first is if you're coming from a more traditional ETL uh, processing background against databases, you, you may sort of uh, be drawn to this ability to set the file name that's coming out of your ETL process. You can use patterns. You can set up a name per partition. You can use a column data for your file name and you can create a single file output from it. I'd caution you against this because the most effective way to work with data at scale, if you need to scale this out, is to remain with the default file name, which will be essentially the job ID or the um, universal unique ID or the GUID from the process. A lot of times when you're running this as an ETL or data engineer uh, developer, you may not like that output, but it, it will definitely be the most effective and the fastest way for it to work. But what you can do to be um, more effective in your formatting of the location of this data is to set partition folders. And you can tell EDF to do that under the optimize tab. So I've used the partitioning style of key partitioning and I'm using two columns out of my uh, data. So in this case, I do have to have a projection and I'm using columns that are coming from that. Now these, this projection could be created on the fly by using late binding, but I did the early binding from the projection on the source. I'm saying create a column for year, I'm sorry, create a folder for year from the column year and create a folder for writing. Let's see if I can use the uh, drawing tool here to demonstrate this for you. So it's gonna create a folder structure like this. Again, on my top level folder, where all of my data is gonna be landed from the uh, folder listed in the data sets. And then I want to have, uh, I'm telling ADF to create a subfolder for every year that's in the data, and then a folder in there for every rating. So we'll get the top level, we'll get every year, we'll get every rating inside of the year, and inside of that will be the leaf level, which is going to be the parquet file, the job ID from the execution at that time because I'm not setting the file name. Okay, so let me run this for you and show you what the output is going to look like. I'm gonna go over to my pipeline, which I have over here. And I'll just change this over to, uh, this was data lake one, or sorry, this is data lake ETL. Okay, let's go ahead and debug this. And I have my debug cluster already started up and my session is running so I can run this. I'll give this a minute to run then I'll come right back. Okay, so in a few minutes later that executed and created a set of folders for me based on the um, sort of parquet spark partitioning format that you would see within a data lake. So I have my container. Uh, this can be your blob store or it could be your ADLS the Azure data lake data stores. I had a folder called output and parts. This was defined in my data set. Let me show you from my data set. The data set is here. If I open that up, output parts. All right, so now put parts. Then we have the different partition folders that was created by the process. So we have years 2006, and then there are the different ratings, and each rating that landed um, for each of those years for the movies, the actual file will contain all of the movies for the year as snappy parquet, essentially it's compressed parquet files. So that's how I converted my CSV into parquet to set me up for further downstream processes. And now that I'm in the data lake, I'm in the format that you really want to be in to be most effective in your scaled out processing. Now that my my data is in that format, what I can do is from another data flow within my data factory or my Synapse Analytics, I can take that same data set that I wrote to, and now I can read those as partitioned folders. So I point to that top level that was in the data set. And notice I'm using the globbing of star 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 dot parquet. What this means is give me everything from that year from that rating, every folder and every file and every Parquet file in there. I don't want all the extra um, files that are put in there from Spark. I point to my partition root path and now what will happen is I'm going to, uh, by the way, I'm going to also tell Data Factory, I'm going to ask it to put the file name that was discovered, every file name, in a column called My File Name. All right. Now when I do this, 
data factory is able to discover the partition, I'm sorry, the, um, the projection. And again, the projection is coming from the files because this is a self-describing file type of Parquet. So it has the data type stored. So because data factory can now read across all those partition folders, you have the data separated on your data lake so that you can easily look at the different values or the different um, data as it falls in these different buckets, which makes it much easier to work with than if you're working with a, a large set of, of large files or files that are all just stuffed into one single folder. But a, another way to um, smartly arrange your files in your folders in the data lake is to partition those by date. And one of the key reasons to do that is because that will then allow you to work with your data as it comes in incrementally and be able to land the data by day or hour or month or whatever your cadence is that you land your data from the data lake. So I'm going to do that here in this case. I'm going to take my partitioned folders that I created, which was by year and by uh, rating. I'm then going to add an element of date and time to it. So in this case, I'm just going to use date and I'm going to say ETL year. I'm going to call, I'm going to create new columns through a derived column called ETL year, ETL month, and ETL day. So this will be essentially a synthetic date added to the rows through this derived column. And I'm using the current date function and I'm passing that into each of the different um, date functions within the expression language in data flows for year, month, and day of month. So now when I go to land that into my sync, I'm staying as parquet, so I'm not transforming this to a different file format or a different type. Instead, what I do is I leave my naming the same. So this is the fastest mechanism to leave the, that um, job ID name for the file name. Under optimize, however, and key partitioning, I'm saying ETL year, month, and day. Now what will happen when you run this is you'll end up with partition folders that look like this. So there's my year, and there's the month and the year. And there is the day. So I ran that on that date and they got the parquet files for that day. Now, if I run this again today, uh, let's say today is the 17th and I have new movies that were uh, loaded into my source file, I would now get a new folder with those new days and I won't overwrite anything. And I'll continue to be able to add to my collection of movies in the data lake.